Whenever we talk about Starship launches, it's not the technical challenges that give us the most worry. It's the FAA launch license, and this time is no different. As SpaceX gears up for Flight 5, there have been some big concerns about how long the FAA might take to give the green light. Some even feared it could take months, just like it did with the past couple of launches. But here's the good news. The license is expected to be approved much sooner than expected, and there's even a chance the launch might happen as soon as this weekend. In this video, we'll break down all the latest updates about the upcoming flight and what to expect. But before we dive any deeper, make sure to check out the link in the description to grab your very own Starship model from eBay at an affordable price. SpaceX is preparing for Starship's fifth flight with such intensity that it feels like the launch is just around the corner, even though the FAA has not yet granted a license. This preparation, which includes everything from flight trajectory planning to rigorous testing on critical systems like the Super Heavy Booster and the Chopsticks recovery mechanism, shows that SpaceX is acting as if all regulatory hurdles will soon be cleared. The confidence is not misplaced, as the company has a solid reason to believe that the FAA approval will come through in time. One of the major signs of this confidence is that SpaceX has released a detailed countdown and flight trajectory on its website. Typically, when SpaceX does this, it signals that they believe the launch is imminent, within days. This isn't a minor detail. Publishing a countdown and flight trajectory tells space enthusiasts and industry insiders that SpaceX is in the final stages of preparation, and this wouldn't be done unless they had some reason to trust the launch was imminent. SpaceX also ran water deluge tests on October 8th, which simulate crucial phases of the flight. These water deluge tests are critical as they help control the immense heat and pressure that occurs during a launch and landing, it's not just the booster and landing systems, but also the various systems aboard Starship that have been tested for readiness, which includes rechecking structural integrity and software performance. One major reason for SpaceX's confidence could be NASA's involvement in the Starship project. NASA is relying on Starship for its Artemis missions, which plan to return humans to the moon and eventually Mars. NASA's influence in the U.S. space industry is substantial, and there's speculation that they could have been working behind the scenes to expedite the FAA approval process for SpaceX. NASA has a lot riding on Starship, so it's possible that their involvement has given SpaceX the confidence to push ahead with such intensity. Another reason why SpaceX might be acting as though the FAA approval is a formality could be related to their track record. SpaceX has been here before facing delays and regulations only to get the approval at the last minute. Musk and his team likely have experience navigating these regulatory timelines and may have insights that make them confident the FAA will deliver the license just in time. The FAA has stated in the past that they were not planning to issue a license until late November, but SpaceX's actions seem to suggest that they anticipate the license could come earlier, possibly due to a change in the FAA's stance or ongoing efforts to meet all regulatory requirements. Additionally, SpaceX has an enormous amount of experience dealing with the FAA. It's important to note that SpaceX has been ready to launch Starship for months now, but has been waiting on final approval from the FAA. The delay in issuing the launch license was partly due to some last-minute changes that SpaceX made to the Starship system, which led the FAA to conduct a more thorough review. These changes, including modifications to the rocket's design and recovery systems, triggered a new review process. The FAA has cited safety concerns, particularly around the sonic booms generated by the Super Heavy booster's return. This upcoming Starship launch is notably different from the previous four flights in several ways. The biggest difference is the planned attempt to catch the Super Heavy booster mid-air using the chopsticks mechanism mounted on the launch tower. This has never been attempted before, making it a historic and highly complex maneuver. The goal is to eliminate the need for landing legs, allowing the booster to be caught by mechanical arms and brought back to the launch site, which would significantly reduce the time and cost associated with refurbishing the rocket for future launches. The process is incredibly challenging. 
Approximately 6 minutes and 33 seconds after liftoff, the Super Heavy booster will reignite its engines to begin its descent. If everything goes according to plan at around 6 minutes and 56 seconds, the booster will approach the launch tower, where the chopsticks will catch it mid-air. This requires precise timing and coordination between the booster's descent trajectory and the tower's mechanical system. If the systems fail, SpaceX has a backup plan to land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, similar to what was done during previous tests. SpaceX has been preparing intensely for this flight. They've upgraded the chopstick system, performing extensive tests over the past few weeks, including reinforcing the arms and conducting water deluge tests to simulate launch conditions. The chopsticks have been reinforced to handle the massive load of the Super Heavy booster. New padding has been added to the arms to better grip the rocket, and other components have been adjusted to ensure the catch goes smoothly. One of the reasons this launch is particularly important is because SpaceX is working towards rapid reusability. If the mid-air catch is successful, it could drastically shorten the turnaround time between launches. Instead of having to transport the booster back to the launch site for refurbishment, the rocket could be caught right at the pad cleaned up, and prepped for another flight within days rather than weeks. The challenge of catching a 70-meter-tall booster mid-descent cannot be understated. It requires split-second precision and coordination between the booster's descent trajectory and the tower's mechanical systems. Any misalignment or failure in timing could not only result in the booster crashing into the tower, but also pose a significant risk to the surrounding infrastructure. The infrastructure around the launch site, including the tower, rocket production facilities, and the new launch pads is worth billions of dollars and represents years of engineering work. A failure to catch the booster properly could potentially damage or destroy this vital infrastructure, making this an incredibly high-stakes operation. The risk of a failed catch isn't just to the booster itself, but to SpaceX's entire Starbase facility. To add some confidence to this extremely daring maneuver, SpaceX conducted a virtual simulation of the booster catch during the fourth flight. Though the booster in that flight ultimately landed at sea, the virtual test provided critical data that showed the tower's systems could theoretically handle the load and complexity of catching a super-heavy booster. This simulation, which mirrored the conditions and trajectory of the real catch attempt, was deemed successful. It's this virtual success that has given SpaceX the confidence to try an actual catch on Flight 5. Still, this will be the first time SpaceX attempts to catch a booster in real life, and the stakes couldn't be higher. The FAA is now taking extra time to review the safety and environmental risks associated with the mid-air catch, since it's an entirely new and untested method. However, SpaceX's preparations and public pressure have led to speculation that the FAA might issue the license sooner than expected, with a potential launch date as early as October 13th. That's all for today's update. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.